Rings of Power, Amazon's newest adaptation, and this time, the most expensive television show ever made. Episodes 1 and 2 have been released, and some are raving about it, some weren't impressed, and some people have devoted every part of their being to making sure that people know how absolutely horrible this show is. So which is it? I'm not sure I can answer that question for you, but I will give you my impressions in today's video. I'll be giving my reactions and review of episodes one and two of Amazon's Rings of Power. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red for Rings of Power episodes one and two. At this point, I'm sure many of you have seen the first two episodes. I'm gonna talk fairly freely about them. If you haven't watched and want to be completely unspoiled, go watch the episodes and come back and watch this video. This video has been sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one provider of VPN services in the world. What is a VPN, Nablus? Well, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and it protects your internet browsing by creating a virtual barrier between you and your internet provider. What that means for you is that your browsing history is protected, it's not tracked, and your network is protected so you can't be hacked as easily. It's very important to have a VPN if you ever join public Wi-Fi, and honestly, just important to have it in general. Nord is offering my viewers a massive discount on the already cheap NordVPN service. Just click the link in the description of the video and get signed up. And just by doing so, you greatly support the channel. All right, before diving into the review, smash that like button on the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel. This is mostly a Wheel of Time focused channel, but I dive into other fantasy here and there, and I will be regularly covering my thoughts on many of the current fantasy shows that are currently out right now which is a good lead into talking about Rings of Power. Obviously, I am known most for being a Wheel of Time content creator. I'm a massive fan of the series. I was invited by Amazon to the world premiere of Wheel of Time last year, and I host a Wheel of Time convention. My passions lie with the Wheel of Time as my favorite fantasy series, but I am a fan of other fantasy as well. I have read all of Tolkien's works, every single one of them, multiple times, in fact. I read them before I read Wheel of Time. And that being said, I'm not a student of Tolkien. I have not read transcripts of his interviews. I don't take part in the online fandom. And I don't spend my time thinking about theories from his works like I do with The Wheel of Time. I think that is important to say because I'm an informed fan, but I am by no means a Tolkien expert. And it's been a few years since I've read The Silmarillion, which is where most of the content from this series is being drawn from. I came at this series without a really vested interest and mostly just a curiosity about how it would do. I have to say I always knew I would watch the show, but I wasn't overly excited for it. I, I was actually more excited for House of the Dragon than I was for this show. And I'll add, I had fairly low expectations for both of those shows. I'm not entirely sure why that was, but it just felt like the story of the Lord of the Rings had been told to satisfaction for me, and I was a bit let down by the Hobbit movies. There are some amazing stories contained within the Silmarillion and Tolkien's other works, but none are fleshed out to the point where they could be adapted into a television show that would run for multiple seasons without a great deal of filling in the gaps and creative license from the writers and the showrunners. We all know how that went with the ending of Game of Thrones, and I think that's why I was not super excited about Rings of Power. There is of course a possibility that the show would be great, but the writing and creative vision for the showrunner would dictate more of how that went rather than the source material, simply because there wasn't a lot of source material to draw from. So for whatever reason, I wasn't excited, but as a fantasy fan, I knew I would be checking it out. And I certainly have some things to say, and I guess let's first start with what I liked about the new show. And then we'll talk about what I didn't like, and then I'll address some of the controversy surrounding the show, and I'll give my opinion on if that is warranted or not. So in terms of what I like, I will say that this is not only the most beautiful TV show I have ever seen, but it is on par with the live action movies in terms of the landscapes and some of the scenery. I was flat out blown away with the special effects and the sheer scale uh, of the beauty and the way the show was shot. Obviously, you would expect this to some degree, given that this is the most expensive television show ever made. This certainly changes the bar completely when it comes to what a TV show can look like when a budget is truly sunk into production. What else did I love? Well, I know this kind of ties in with my last statement about how pretty things were, but in episode two, the Khazad Dune scenes were incredible. That is the stuff that I find so fun to see. We got to see a fully functioning dwarven city 
and it was something to behold. I loved it. But what else was there other than scenery? Well, I loved some of the other history that we got. I loved seeing the two trees, the mentions of Morgoth, even seeing Valinor. One of the things I love about Tolkien is the cosmology and just seeing the places that weren't really addressed in Peter Jackson's movies, that was pretty cool for me. Another thing I have liked so far is the mystery surrounding the guy that fell from the sky, even if this does appear to be literally the plot of Diablo 3 played out in Lord of the Rings. I have my guesses as to who he is, but so far at least, I'm enjoying the mystery. I'm also hoping that Sauron ends up being someone that we didn't see coming and that there's some type of significant twist coming, and I think there probably will be. Now, there's also quite a bit of the show that I found either dull or I didn't like so far. This is far from a perfect television show, despite how much money they spent to make it. For one, I'm not really connected to any of the characters at this point. I'm not really cheering for any of them. I don't feel like I understand what motivates them outside of like very, very basic, hey, I want to avenge my brother type things. And I feel like a lot of the dialogue is fairly clunky. But then again, that's actually not that much different from the books. I know I just offended all of the Tolkien people, but Tolkien has a lot of strengths as a writer, uh, but really fleshed out and deep characters were not one of them, or at least that wasn't his intent. I sort of feel the same way about Rings of Power. One of the things that Peter Jackson's movies, and really the extremely talented cast that he had in the movies, one of the things they did was give the characters more depth and relatability, something that I feel like is missing with the characters in Rings of Power. And like I said, I personally just not very attached to any of them at this point, which I would say is a distinction between House of the Dragon, because in that, I feel like the character development has been outstanding. So if you really compare those two shows, that's one area where I feel like that shines and Rings of Power just doesn't so far. I also have to say the plot has been fairly slow, which is not something I'm totally against, but there just haven't been any hooks that have me desperate to see the next episode or know what happens next. They are certainly slow burning some of the plot, but there just needs to be a bit more substance there. The show will probably pick up, but the lack of connection for me to any of the characters combined with the slower pace, it just kind of has it feeling a bit off. If this wasn't Lord of the Rings and it didn't look as amazing as it does, I might not be interested in keeping watching the show. And that's just kind of the way the story has gone so far. But as it stands right now, the show is flawed, but it has my interest and I plan on watching. It's enjoyable. It's certainly not the best television show I've ever seen, but I don't hate it. And I'm actually enjoying it for the most part. But that brings me to the major blowback and criticism of the show that's been around there. Uh, Amazon had to turn off the reviews for, for the show on their website. I know some other places have done the same thing. It's something I wish that I could say I don't understand, but after the last couple years of covering Wheel of Time content, I have a very full understanding of what's going on. There is a massive difference between being critical of a show due to its merits, so the acting, the writing, the story, the effects, etc., and then being critical of a show because they cast people with a different skin color. I have absolutely zero time for that last group of people, and unfortunately, that's most of what I think we're seeing. Now, that sometimes gets disguised by saying, well, I'm just a Tolkien purist, but if you boil it down and you keep questioning, that's really a lot of the source of some of this. If you are one of the people who takes offense because you hate Rings of Power so far and you think I'm calling you a racist, that's not true. I'm only calling you a racist, whether you realize it or not, if your main problem is, is that they have actors with more melanin in their skin than others. I guarantee you that many people who didn't read the books are enjoying the show. They don't care about what color somebody's skin is. That really isn't a defense. I've seen all kinds of people saying, well, I'm not racist. I just respect Tolkien's original work. And he said they were all white. Well, this is where me not being a Tolkien expert comes in. I haven't read all of his interviews to say whether he said that or not. But frankly, I don't really care if Tolkien said that everybody in his books was unequivocally white and that people of color don't exist in his world. I don't care. This is an adaptation for the audience now. So these people exist. It's your own problem if that prevents you from liking the show. It doesn't affect the plot. Review bombing a show because there are people of color says way more about you than it does anything else. And obviously your efforts are in vain because the show is doing amazingly well. That all that aside, what did you all think of Rings of Power? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments of the video and please give the video a like if you liked it and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like Wheel of Time content and other fantasy related content. Thank you to my patrons for your support. I could not do this without you. If you wish to support the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon link in the description of the video. Thank you to all of you that already do. Lastly, take a look at one of these videos you might also like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.